Good morning, good day, good evening, wherever you are, um, to celebrate this month of October, the month of Halloween. Um, I have been reading some spooky stories, and this is my second installment. Um, these are stories that came from Las Vegas, Nevada. I have three short stories, all of them very good, so please hang on and give a listen. And here is our first story. This story is entitled Gino by Ken Hampton in Las Vegas. There are many legends in the mob city of Sin City, in the mob history of Sin City. Bugsy Siegel's dream meant using the most effective people to get things done. Gino's six foot five dark pinstriped frame was always a precursor to swift violence aimed at card cheats and crooked dealers. The money must flow and Gino added a river of blood to make it so. He plied his trade for over 30 years for known syndicate bosses to their corporate counterparts. He was the ultimate enforcer, feared and respected by every level of Vegas crime and society. When Gino died, the town collectively gave a sigh of relief. However, Gino, it seems, is a true professional and doesn't know when to quit. He still appears to those deserving souls in dark parking lots and stairways. His well-dressed, bloodless white skin, empty eye sockets and hands clutching a bloody hammer or ice pick still gets the job done. A side note, after one especially brutal night of mob retaliation, a young lawyer was giving newly bailed out Gino, the giant, a vicious tongue lashing. Gino let him finish his trade his, not his trace, tirade, then leaned in and spoke these words. Learn to get along in this town and start drinking gin. Seems Gino was a prophet also because that mayor, I mean that lawyer, <laughs> became mayor of Las Vegas. And uh, he was a very renowned mayor. And uh, he was in office for quite a few years. So evidently he heeded Gino's advice as to how to get along in that town. So, okay, our second story is Saffron by Mavis Huntington in Henderson, Nevada. This lady of the night dwells in the SLS, formerly known as the Sahara Hotel and Casino. Saffron has electric red hair and jade green neon eyes. Her purple satin gown clings to her sensuous body, just like Marilyn Monroe's did. Her style says classic 1950s. Even her fingernails are long, purple, and pointed. She is strikingly beautiful, sitting in a dark corner of her favorite bar. Her inviting smile causes a tourist or salesman to wonder what price he will have to pay for a night with her. Saffron giggles when the enamored man suggests they go to his room for a nightcap. She seems to float down the corridor. After they get comfortable, there is a surprise. Saffron runs her fingers up his body to his throat. Her long nails sever his cartoid artery. She giggles again as she feeds. Our third story comes to us from James A. Cook of Las Vegas, Nevada. 
and the title of his story is The Beast of Boxcar Bay. In the dark, at the end of the dusty road leading to Boxcar Bay on Lake Mead, not the place to be at night alone, had a terrific evening fishing with 80 plus stripers in the metal boat cooler. Cinching the last tie down, I heard a loud rustling and raspy growling emanating from the tamarisk bushes beside the jeep. Aimed my headlamp in that direction, thinking the coyote had the scent of my catch. The light beam revealed two widespread red eyes reflecting from a large black form, too big for a coyote. The headlamp went dead. In the darkness, I grabbed four stripers out of the cooler and threw them in the direction of the growls. Snarling, scrunching sounds ensued as I cl closed the jeep door, started the engine, and headed up the dusty road. Maybe a panther, I thought, driving 25 miles per hour up the incline. I glanced in the mirror and through the dust and glow of the trailer lights, I could see the black form, keeping pace with my Jeep. I went faster, 35, then 45 miles per hour, and it was still there. Around a curve and into a sandy trough in the road. And then my Jeep stalled out. I could hear the beast shuffling and wheezing in the dust cloud surrounding us. It started shaking the entire trailer with boat and jeep. I heard a tremendous crash, and then all was still. It left, I thought. I started the jeep and floored it. The violent thrashing had loosened me from the sand in the pit. I kept going up toward North Shore Drive, turning onto the road home and in, and turning onto the road home, an armored truck, three park rangers, a Humvee, and animal control went by me and turned onto Boxcar Road. This raised some questions in my mind, that's for sure. I went through Sunrise Mountain Pass into the safety of my driveway. I was shaking and thought that I thought that maybe cleaning the fish would calm me down. Walking to the rear of the boat, I saw the starboard corner had been ripped off by the thing and my cooler of fish was gone. It left one striper stuck to the bottom of the boat. Well, I filleted it and ate it that night. I never stayed out at the lake at night again. Now I've been to Boxcar Cove, they call it, and uh, went fishing there and did some sea doing and uh, we even camped there one night and uh, sometimes around Lake Mead, this is around Lake Mead, Nevada, and sometimes you can hear some pretty scary things out there in the dark and uh, kind of makes you wonder what there is. We had a boat, um, a pontoon boat, and we usually would put anchor or tie boat off on shore, but we would stay on the boat because um, sometimes you just didn't know what was in that desert around that lake, and it could be kind of scary. So uh, those are my three stories for tonight. I hope you enjoyed them. If you have some stories that you would like to send in to me or to email me or um, just let me know and I'll be happy to read them. So we're going to have some more scary stories this month. So please stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed them and you have a great night. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are and have a very spooky weekend. <laughs> good night, everyone.